In this video, I want to um, guide you through the restoration of these walls. Uh, there are uh, many ways uh, throughout the country and the world that a lot of people, you know, um, actually exercise this type of uh, projects. Uh, uh, as you can tell, right now, well, this this house is about 114 years old, and we don't want to start tearing down the old lattice uh, and plaster walls. Uh, these walls were uh, uh, composed of um, uh, uh, small strips of, of wood. To um, to create some sort of like a like a straight surface. After that, they use some fibers like horse hair or other materials to make a, a, a kind of strong bond uh, cement on on the lattice and then plaster to finish it. But um, you know, with with many decades, I mean, you can start seeing a lot of cracks in, in many ways. So um, there is actually you no know, a particular way just to uh, uh, covering one of the cracks and just trying to uh, get away with it because I mean, there are plenty of them and they will show up later on so we're going to take care of the entire wall. Um, so there are many products and many ways of doing it and I hope um, I'm, you know, I'm able to um, express and teach you as much as I, as I know about it and make it uh, you know, practical for you guys. So once you finish uh, removing all the, the paper and wallpaper or whatever you, you consider that is an obstacle for you you want to make sure and clean the surface. Um, there are a few things that we're going to do, a few steps. We're going to use sponges. And sometimes when you have a lot of uh, glue on the surface, and that is not the case on this one, um, you want to use, use some soapy water, with some sort of like dishwasher detergent. And that will help you to you know, avoid and take all the, all the material out. Uh, also, uh, uh, be aware of little small pieces of leftover wallpaper, little fibers. Those will, will um, uh, give you a little bit of trouble when you're, when you're trying to make everything smooth. So after that, uh, there, are, there are a few things that are really important. Uh, when you are working with this, you want to make sure that you have the new material that is going to be applied um, you know, nice and, and attached to it. Um, so for that, there are, there are different materials uh, and different presentations. This is the, this, these two are the same type of materials. Um, and I'm going to get closer and explain to you what's going on. This is a concrete bonding adhesive. Now, uh, notice that when you go in the back, it actually tells you that it's also good for plaster. Um, it, it is durable and I use them for many purposes. So um, one important thing over here is to um, be able to apply all this in a nice way uh, throughout the entire wall once your walls are nice and dry after you finish taking all the debris and stuff out. So we wanna go ahead and, and use um, uh, I have the gallon presentation over there. You want to go ahead and use this material. And there are plenty around the world that, that are different. And overall, you want to use some sort of bonding material before that. Some, some other brands like Blaster Weld are really good. But not everywhere you're going to find it, obviously. So just get some good bonding material for that. Uh, we're going to use it as, as, you know, like if you were painting or putting primer on the walls. Before we continue with something that is really important, which is a, a really wide fiberglass mesh that I'm going to use to avoid any type of cracks in the future. Once the, the, the wall is properly clean and dry, we're going to continue with the bonding material that we spoke about. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a tray just like if we were to paint regular paint. You're also going to need a brush to apply this material. Now uh, what you do is that you shake it really well. Uh, make sure that everything is fine because sometimes there are sediments in the bottom or whatever. Um, and, and then you just apply it over here like if you were to paint. This is a little more liquid than regular so you may not need to apply so much of it. You will notice right away that you have it on the wall. Um, I also have an extension, you know, like a painting pole extension so you can use this thing. And um, there, there are a few things a lot of people may look for uh, through this video because they don't have these walls but they have, a, I mean, meaning like these ancient walls. But they have maybe walls that are um, uh, just, just, you know, really messed up in, in other ways. In other words, there may be uh, a poor finish on the wall or whatever. And what I suggest you is to go ahead and clean it, take whatever is spilling off or whatever, and, and use this material on it. What happens when you don't do this is that you can actually scrape the entire uh, layer of plaster that somebody puts on because it's not adhesion to the wall. I mean, you have to go through a lot of um, uh, cleaning 
to make sure that everything is fine but you want to you know you want to leave something durable especially if it's your house or you want to maintain my goodwill and your name and you know company's name or whatever um, and, and again you can find it in many ways so we're going to continue with that we're going to apply all the material i'm not going to just film me myself painting all this thing but i'm going to apply all the material and then we continue with the other step which is actually uh, installing the the fiberglass mesh that is really cool the next thing that we're going to do is that I'm going to go over a little bit of the material because he has streaks. That adhesive that we use, uh, um, that I just applied on the wall, um, is drying right now. Now, the the, the adhesive for for uh, the proper uh, application and you know the the project that we're going to do of of pretty much skim coating this this entire wall. Um, you have to have the, the material in a tacky finish. In other words, your fingers must stick a little bit on the material for you to start working with your plaster or your compound or, or mixture, like in this case. Now, um, when you're working with masonry you know, stuff, then you let it dry a little bit more. But in this case, you want to have it tacky. Now, what you see here is um, the, the mesh, the rolls of mesh, fiberglass mesh. Now, um, this material obviously comes as wide as you can see. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work in two sections. I don't want to rush myself. If you have helpers, obviously you can do a little more work. But in this case, we're going to make sure that that's tacky, just like what, what we need the recommendation is. And then we're going to um, you know, um, start working with our plaster. If you notice previously, behind cameras, um, I actually cut these sections of the material, 101 inches, which is the height that we have over there. Notice that I took out the base molding and the picture frame. We don't want to uh, damage the stuff. And actually, if we take the base molding, the base molding is nothing behind it. So literally, we can't go right behind that because it's a, it's a hole, right? They started from there up. So uh, for that purpose, we're going to do this. We're going to have a mixture. We're going to use water, obviously. And we're going to have a uh, drywall compound. This 20 minute setup compound is a little, a little faster to work with. I mean, you don't want to rush, so that's why we're going to mix uh, about a quarter of a bucket of the drywall compound with about four cups of, of this material. Now, obviously, we're going to put some water, we're going to mix it, and we're going to leave it creamy. Now, the difference of that, and uh, this is a secret, you know, a trade secret, is that when you work with 20 minute setup, this thing is really hard to sand down and all the stuff, but the, the important thing is that when this thing is drying, is malleable. You can actually play with the stuff, take grooves out, take little lines out, and keep just working with your compound knives. Now, what are compound knives? If you don't know, are these things that are used for, for, for you know, like a compound trowel, whatever. This is like a 14 inch one, this is a 6 inch one, and this is something to transport the material with. Now, this is a powder, and obviously it's going to be tough to mix in an in, even in way. And for that, I suggest you to use this mixer. You know, this blade over here, this mixer, will be um, used with, uh, with a, you know, a proper drill. Don't use a little drill because you will burn it, so you need something a little stronger. What you're gonna do is we're gonna, you know, gonna start mixing it with water, and you want a nice, creamy, semi-solid material. It will, you know, it will give you several minutes to work with. So what you do is that once that thing is, is tacky, you're gonna go ahead and put a little bit of the new mixture on the top, and you're gonna bring this, this mesh all the way up and then you start covering the entire mesh. Make sure that you have the seams fairly, fairly close. You know, you don't wanna have them space or overlapping too much because now we're, we're dealing with, you know, with different layers. So you're gonna need a lot of, you know, not a lot, but a couple of buckets of compound and some of these bags to start mixing. Um, and that's it, you know, that's, that's how we're gonna continue. I started in two sections, don't rush too much. It's a lot of work, uh, but don't rush it, and, and that's it. So that's how we, we do it. Now that you have your, your mixture, uh, what you want to do is you want to create, I already you know, have one section over here, applied all the stuff, took all the, the wrinkles out and stuff. So you want to you know, create some sort of like a surface where the, the, the mesh is going to be able to be sustained while you kind of um, stretch it, you know, gently stretch it with the same knives and stuff like that. So I'm going to start in another section, make sure that you line this up. Cool thing is that when you try to line it up and maybe it's not, um, it's not completely lined up, you can actually just kind of on the bottom, you shift it a little bit one way or the other, and that will give you some sort of uh, room to, to play with the material before it's, it's too hard to, to attach. So what you're going to do is you're going to just go ahead and I'm going to give you an example. 
Um, I hope I don't get tangled in my own microphone. Um, all right, so here's the material. Um, and um, this is what you do. Let me put this here. You want to make sure that um, you're lining up like like putting wallpaper lined up with the with the other section over here. And once you pretty much have um, I mean a guess that you're going to be nice and straight, you start stretching this thing in the middle uh, towards the sides. And then that's how you just stretch this really well. I mean, you start stretching it and adjust it. Make sure that they are nice and straight and, and you start spreading your, your, the rest of your compound in. But it's, it's really cool, it's really simple. Once you have that, I mean, it's not gonna go nowhere. Uh, without it, it's gonna be a mess. So I just recommend you to follow that step. Spread it a little bit. Make sure that you again you start taking all those wrinkles. So kind of like take it out that way as you go down, right? I can actually tell you that we can probably use this video for two purposes. The first one will be adding the final skim code or the final code of a restoration of a plaster wall or a, um, making sure that a wall is smooth, is smooth enough after you take out wallpaper, right? So, so you know, for the same purpose, I guess. If you take out wallpaper, uh, make sure that you clean all the imperfections, all the little pieces of um, paper that are left, remember? I mean, believe me that when you pass your, your compound knife, you're gonna have that little piece of, uh, paper film bothering you, so you want to take that out. But in this case, what we want to do is the last step. The last step is going to consist in adding a thin, thin layer of uh, drywall compound. All right, just like what we were doing when we were mixing before for the entire restoration of the plaster wall, we're just going to get um, drywall compound, we're going to add a little bit of water and we're going to mix it. Um, sometimes people um, mix the entire buckets like when you're doing an entire wall, which is understandable. Sometimes if you have a small repairs, you just wanna mix as you go. So in other words, you put some water into a bucket uh, where the compound is and just kind of mix it up a little bit and then put it in your transporting, you know, trowel and then apply it. So here's how it goes for all the things. Remember having different type of compound knives. I have a, a two inch, a 10 inch, a six inch and a 14 inch blade, right? So um, on the final ones, you may want to use the the bigger ones, which are like these 14 inches or whatever, you know, you, I mean, you may have a little section corners and angles, whatever. So what we're gonna do is this. I already, I previously applied some of, um, some water into the, the, the compound, you know, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just add a little bit more of, of water. I'm just gonna mix it up a little bit. And, you know, just, just get it as you go and you, you finish mixing it up in your tray. I'm gonna show you how. So I'm gonna grab this right here, it's very really useful. All right, so here I have, you know, for all say demonstration purposes, I already have it over here. If you notice, I have a, a source of light uh, on the floor. That, that light is helping me to see the imperfections on the wall. Sometimes regular lighting, like daytime light or you know artificial lighting in other places, doesn't give us enough you know uh, light. When you have a lot of uh, imperfections on the walls, you want to make sure you just go ahead and send it down. This is a way to dry sanding block. It's a sponge that you can actually rinse and do it back again. It will avoid a lot of problems. Um, you may want to use a window fan, which is this thing and expensive that you can actually. You just put in a window and blow air out. So the, instead of the dust flying inside the house, it will fly outside. So this is how it goes. We're gonna, you know, put some, some of the material in your, you know, transporting tray. I use this one because it's practical for me, you know. I don't know where part of the world you are right now, but 
um, you know, many European countries, South American countries, and stuff use this type of material. Some other ones use like a little container, whatever, whatever is convenient for you. So what we're going to do is in this little section over here, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to add, you know, our compound. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place it by using our compound knives, 14 inch with two fingers in the back. I'm going to just add to the wall my material. Don't put too much pressure in the beginning because it will, it will fall. You know, the compound right now is, is fairly smooth and maybe has a, a, the consistency of a like vanilla pudding type of thing. So what we want to do is just put some material on the wall. Don't be too frustrated about how much are you putting. Probably the more the better at this point, and I'll, and I'll show you why. Because, um, you know, we're going to remove the majority of it. We just want to make sure that we are covering the surfaces, right? So when you have some of it, um, you just kind of spread it around, whatever you see, little, you know, pockets of, you know, empty areas, whatever, you know. So just, just make sure that you cover it up. And again, this is, um, um, see what just happened? Some of it fell. But um, um, just make sure that, um, that you cover all the little areas, right? Some over here, some over here in the bottom. Um, you know, when you're doing this, you wanna, you wanna avoid as much dust and little particles as possible because this is your last coat. And, and if you have a lot of, you know, dust or garbage or debris on the floor or on the edges, I mean, that thing is gonna be dragged into the middle and it's gonna create, you know, some issues as you're doing it. So you wanna make sure that you clean that as much as possible. And, and that's it. So what I'm doing is, again, I'm just covering all this area. Making sure that I have all the little holes covered. And this, I mean, you can, you can work with bigger sections. Um, but you know, it's totally your choice. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna just clean my knife and start removing the excess of the material. Place it over here. And you don't want to leave, I mean, at, at, at this point, you don't want to leave too much on the surface. I mean, you want to make sure that you re remove as much as possible. Um, and literally, I mean, you don't see no lines. Their lines are disappearing because, you know, this is just to cover the last little imperfections. So you can do this again when you're um, maybe put in the last coat of uh, plaster on your drywall compound, I mean drywall uh, sheets, you know, like plaster boards. Or in this case, or when you take wallpaper out, when you're fixing a, a wall that was damaged before. And that's it. So this is how it is. That's how you apply the last coat of compound. Um, so thank you so much for watching again. Now the final thing is let it dry. Send it down a little bit and use, using masks and stuff like that and just primer and paint. So I hope this, this, this video will help you to understand how the process of restoring plaster walls or any type of wall. And you know, I'll be making more videos about how to do a more detailed, uh, delicate work as far as when walls are completely out and stuff like that. So thank you so much. Um, please subscribe to my channel if you're not a subscriber. If you are, um, thank you again. Share it with your friends, like it. And you know, if you have any questions, I will be happy to answer them as, as soon as I can, okay? So have a good one and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.